Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So I'm the first one to speak today for my lecture. So my name is Dr. Benny Ng. I'm the one that kind of created this program for you guys. So first of all, welcome to come to the University of Hong Kong. This is the second time we are organizing this program. So hopefully, you guys will have fun today. Okay. So this is my talk. It's blank. And people said an image is like a thousand word. So I'm going to start my talk by showing you a series of images first. I think I've already spoken for more than 7,000 words. And I feel like that's probably maybe the end, should be the end of my presentation. But at the same time, I put on you an explanation of the hidden order in nature. So this is what we're gonna start. The hidden order in nature, okay. So you see all these seven images, and I'm trying to explain to you the hidden order behind all these images. Can anyone tell me what's the hidden relationship among these numbers below? Yes, please. When you add, when you add two consecutive numbers in, the, in this, this sequence, you get the next number. OK. okay. Are you sure? Okay. When you add five and eight together, you get thirteen, which is the next number. You get the thirteen, which is the next number in the sequence. Mm-hmm. Do you guys agree? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, good. You guys are pretty sharp today. Okay, so yes, we have our gift person and you deserve a well deserved prize. Okay. So that's correct. Basically, you look at the sequence. 1 plus 1 equal to 2, 1 plus 2 equal to 3, and so on. You keep adding the two numbers together, you get to the next. Okay? And this particular sequence discovered by a mathematician, okay, Fibonacci, and that's why we call this a Fibonacci numbers. Okay? Now, I show you all the images at the beginning. We talk about Fibonacci numbers, then how do these plans have to do with the Fibonacci numbers? Okay. Is that right? Do you guys understand what he's talking about? The golden ratio. Well, People are sort of fascinated by this kind of Fibonacci number, the sequence, and also patterns in nature. Okay, so they try to do their very best to try to look for this stuff. Okay, let's see if this is actually true. Okay. Let's check out the bottom, 8 and 13. If you wanted to draw a mathematically realistic pine cone, you might start by drawing five spirals one way and eight going the other. I'm going to mark up starting and ending points for my spirals first as a guide, and then draw the arms, eight one way and five the other. Now I can fill in the little pine cone things. So there's Fibonacci numbers in pine cones, but are there Fibonacci numbers in other things that start with pine? Let's count the spirals on this thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. The leaves are hard to keep track of, but they're in spirals too, of Fibonacci numbers. What if we look at these really tight spirals going almost straight up? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, a Fibonacci number. Can we find a third spiral on this pine cone? Sure, go down like this. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. But that's only a couple examples. How about this thing I found on the side of the road? I don't know what it is. It probably starts with pine, though. 
five and eight. Let's see how far the conspiracy goes. What else has spirals in it? This artichoke is five and eight. So does this artichoke looking flower thing. And this cactus fruit does too. Here's an orange cauliflower with five and eight, and a green one with five and eight. I mean, five and eight. Oh, it's actually five and eight. Maybe plants just like these numbers, though. Doesn't mean it has anything to do with Fibonacci, does it? So let's go for some higher numbers. We're going to need some flowers. I think this is a flower. It's got 13 and 21. These daisies are hard to count, but they have 21 and 34. Now let's bring in the big guns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 15, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, I promise this is a random flower and I didn't pick it out especially to trick you into thinking there's Fibonacci numbers and things, but you should really count for yourself next time you see something spot. Okay, so actually, if you don't catch what she said, basically the pine cone image I show you, you can actually find two of the Fibonacci numbers. Okay, in this case, 8 and 13. For the sunflowers, for example, you can have 21 and 34. Maybe this is something that you never figured out before. Maybe you saw, oh, this has some interesting pattern. But next time you go to a you know, flower shop, pick out a daisy or sunflower, start counting. Okay, maybe you find something interesting. Now, Fibonacci's numbers have many different properties. Okay, one of the properties that's related to coming out from the Fibonacci numbers would be the golden ratio, okay, as the student uh, just mentioned uh, earlier. Okay, so how do we calculate the golden ratio? The golden ratio basically by dividing by two consecutive Fibonacci numbers. Okay, so for example, one divided by one, you get one. Okay, but then now you know the next um, Fibonacci numbers are three and two. So three divided by two with one point five, and you keep doing this, that numbers will eventually converge to. 1.61804, okay, approximately. Okay, so this is what we call the golden ratio. Okay, next pictures. I have lots of pictures for you guys. So now, can you guys tell me where is the golden ratio in here? Where is the golden ratio? Snow White, Beauty and the Beast, Sleeping Beauty. Can you guys find it? Let me tell you where it is. Right there. The golden ratio, five. It's right here. Okay. Now, once you know the golden ratio, okay, once again it's 1.618, okay, so you can define something called the golden rectangle. The golden rectangle. You can think of it as, okay, if you have the length of one, okay, then the other length will be 1.61804, okay? So that will be defined as the golden ratio, okay? So oh, what can we do with the golden ratio? Basically, how can we draw it? Basically, you can start from a bunch of square, okay, That's with the length of a Fibonacci number. So for example, you can start with one and one, then the next number will be two, and then you keep drawing a bunch of square, then for every square you combine, basically you're making a rectangle, okay? So all this rectangle that you're seeing right here, they're all golden rectangle, okay? Now, after you have the golden rectangle, you can make use of that to make the golden spiral, okay? As the student mentioned earlier, okay? Basically looking for the two diagonal um, angle and then just draw a curved line. But in general, nature actually follows more a general trend, okay? That's something called the general logarithmic spiral, okay? It's more general than the golden spiral. For example, from the ocean, you can see from the Nautilus shell, from the sky, okay? Low pressure area over Iceland, okay? A hurricane, you see those, so over the sky. Not only that, even the spiral galaxy. So not, just, not only just from the ocean, from the sky, but also from the universe, okay? You will see this kind of spiral pattern. Now, because of all these interesting properties that we've seen, people have been kind of inspired by this nature of the hidden message and try to build 
or imitate the nature. Okay, for example, architect building, the Eden Project in UK, British National Wildfire Center. And people also try to use it for polar design, for example. Okay, we have a Fibonacci name shape. Okay, so you can go back home and start counting kind of always the Fibonacci numbers on those. Or also even the Fibonacci cabinet. Okay. Now, I'm going to switch topic a little bit. Now we're going to talk about something called the fractals. Okay, fractals are a really difficult concept, but the only thing I would like you to know is that if you want to know something, whether it's a fractals or not, look for cell similar similarity. Okay, basically what does that mean? By zooming in the image, you basically see the same pattern over and over and over again. Okay, let me show you a video and you hopefully you will understand what I mean. I'm looking at a furnace, I'm zooming in the furnace, and then afterward, you get closer, you basically get the same pattern over and over and over again. Okay, when you see this situation happen, that particular uh, object will have a fractal's image. Okay, now, it does, I've been showing you guys a lot of plants, okay, but it's not just plants, okay. Then we go to the next one. Other example. I don't know if you guys seen this before. The Russian nesting doll. Okay, it's a cell similarity. Okay, from the big one you open it, you get a smaller one. You keep opening, you get a smaller and smaller one. But it's a cell similarity. Okay, people also inspired by that and create pods like that. Coastline, coastal line. Okay, that's another one that you can see fractals. Now the next part basically. It's called the tessellation because it's related to the one of the workshop that we have today, the Mossad workshop. Okay, basically it's a tying of a plane to fill a plane with one or more geometric shape without any overlap or gap. Okay, so typical example, honeycomb structure. Okay, for the for this, you see uh, all the regular hexagonal shape. Okay, repeated, no overlap, no gap, and. What we have today for the workshop three, the Mosset workshop, this is what they're gonna build today. Okay, I'm just giving you this preview of what you guys are gonna do today. And all the fish here in this particular image, they're actually all of the same size. Okay, it may not look like that way, but they actually are. Okay, but you have to understand a little bit called the long Euclidean geometry. But at this level, it's not really an easy concept to explain, but I just want you to know at least the key message for this particular painting we chose is that for the long Euclidean geometry, under the long Euclidean geometry, all the fish here, they're all the same size, even though it may not look like that way. Okay. And that's conclude my talk for today. So you saw all these images and all of them have a little bit of the hidden order in nature. And hopefully next time from now on, when you start observing nature, you see some more hidden order in nature. Thank you.